Hi, I'm Jamie David with Bernina of America, and I'm excited today to share with you our final overlocker lesson for Bernina Creative Studio on flat locking. Flat locks on an overlocker are one of my favorite stitches to do. So let's find out if it's one of your favorites too. So a flat lock stitch is essentially an unbalanced overlock stitch. This is a great stitch to use for sewing anything that has a bulky seam allowance like sweatshirt fleece. Um, when you sew it, you will have loops on one side and ladders on the other side, but the fabrics pull apart and one lays on top of the other, creating a nice flat seam. So you can see here the loops on one side and here the ladders on the, the other side. So let's take a look at the anatomy of a flat lock stitch. On the front, you're gonna see the loopers from the upper looper. And on the back, you're gonna see the needle threads from your left or right needle. So there is two sides and you can determine which side you like best for your project. And there's a lot of de decorative applications. Um, you can use decorative threads in your looper. You can use even a decorative thread in your needle to get different effects. For our exercise today, we are gonna do a sample that has four stitches. So you can use this flat lock stitch with um, a left needle or a right needle. And you can also do a flat lock stitch with just two threads by using the two thread um, converter. So we're gonna stitch all of these samples. So the first sample will be the wide flat lock using three threads, a narrow flat lock using three threads. And then we're gonna do our two thread samples, narrow and wide. All right, so let's begin making our samples. Um, just cut a piece of basic 12 inch square uh, muslin or a nice like sturdy cotton. And you're just gonna kind of fold back about two inches. And we're gonna just do these flat locks in rows, trimming off the folded edge. So the machine already, we have it, we have it threaded and ready to go. We've got our left needle in the machine and we need to set our tensions. So if you're trying to figure out what your tension should be, just refer to your handy little quick reference guide and you can find your flat lock um, that you're setting up for three thread flat lock with left needle. So we're gonna adjust our tension here. We're gonna take the left needle down to about 1.5. Um, we're not using the right needle, so we don't need to adjust anything there. Our upper looper will remain at four and our lower looper is gonna go to about seven and a half. So that one's really tight, it's gonna be pulling the fabric. And then I want a nice wide flat lock. So I'm going to go ahead and move the cutting width to eight. Um, our stitch length and differential feed are standard. So we've got the stitch length set to 2.5 and our differential feed is still set at one. So we're all set and ready to go. All right, so let's sew our first seam. It's always good to begin with a nice thread chain um, and end with one as well. Um, this is a flat lock, so when we go to pull it apart, we want to make sure that we've got enough thread on the ends um, that nothing gets kind of lost or comes undone. So I'm trimming off my folded edge here. So I've chained off a nice long tail so that when I pull it through the cutter, I still have some thread remaining. So I've got something to work with here. And there's my first seam and we can pull it apart and we've got a nice wide flat lock. All right, so we'll try the next one. So once you've finished um, your stitches, you can use just a regular pen and you can write your notes right on your fabric. That's why I like doing these samples on the muslin. So I've just recorded the settings from our three thread flat lock with the left needle. So let's prepare for using the right needle. So I, I'm gonna end up sewing just a seam right here in a row next to that one. But first of all, I need to set up my mach machine. And for this stitch, I need to install my um, right needle. So I'm gonna use the tools that are located right here in my looper door. I have this very helpful um, needle holder tool to help me install the right needle. 
I like to put the right needle in while I have the other needle in there. It just helps to make sure that you can get the needle in place. It's easy to see how it aligns when there's another needle sitting next to it. So I've put my right needle in and now I can go ahead and take the thread and I'll take my left needle out using the same tool. Just slide that up, loosen the screw, and release the needle and also the thread. The other thing is there's a very helpful needle storage pad located in our new L450 and L460 machines. So I've got that ready. I'll put my tools back and I will go ahead and thread now my right needle. Use the needle threader. Oops, try that one more time. This, this left needle thread will work itself out here. All right, so now I'm gonna set my tensions for my three thread flat lock. Again, you can consult your quick reference chart, uh, but we're gonna go ahead. We don't need to do anything with the left needle tension because we're not using it. We're gonna take our right needle tension down to about a one. Our upper looper will stay at four and our lower looper will go down to about a seven. And I'm gonna make my cutting width just a little bit narrower, still at a stitch length of 2.5 and differential feed is at one. So I'm just gonna sew the next row of stitching here. Put my pin back on. So I'm getting a little bit of extra loops on the edge. So I'm just gonna nudge in my micro thread control just slightly. Again, chaining off a nice long tail. All right, so I've got three thread flat lock. Go ahead here and pull it apart. And you can see the stitch is a little bit narrower, um, but basically looks the same. So once you've got that done, you can go ahead and record just right on your fabric the settings that you did and the, the name of the stitch. So your three thread flat lock is definitely the stronger of the stitch, um, the, st the stitch options. So if you're doing something that you're constructing for a garment or something that's gonna get a lot of wear and tear, that's probably the stitch you wanna use because it uses both loopers. Um, if you're doing more of a decorative application, that's when we can get into using the two threads. And the two thread is achieved by blocking off the upper looper. And we do this with using this little converter. And this converter here lives inside of our looper door. It has its own little cubby here that fits nice and snug. So when you're not using it, make sure that you put it back in and that it's secure in there so it doesn't work loose while you're using your machine. But retrieve your looper converter, and we're gonna install this on top of our upper looper. And there's a little spot specifically for it. But we need to make sure that we have cleared the lower looper thread. So that red thread was sitting up here on my upper looper and I need to make sure that I don't trap that thread inside when I install this. But I'm gonna simply slide the upper looper converter into this little bracket here. And then I'm gonna to push to the back and make sure that it's um, filling in that upper looper eye. So you'll feel that this is nice and secure. And then just for safety measure, I like to turn the hand wheel through an entire rotation and make sure that it's catching my thread. I'm also gonna go ahead and I should have done this probably first, but I'm gonna go ahead and clear that upper looper thread. And now you can um, see, I'll turn that hand wheel one more time, that my lower looper thread is just resting in a cradle that is created by that looper converter. So I'm only using two threads, one needle, and my lower looper to create a two thread flat lock. So we just have two threads that we're dealing with for this stitch. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust our tensions. So our right needle is what we're using this time. 
Um, so we're going to put our right needle to a two. And again, our upper looper, we just put the upper looper converter on and took that thread out. So we're not doing anything there. And we're gonna take our lower looper back down to a four. Um, and I'm gonna make the cutting width Oh, actually, the cutting width set seven, so we're going to leave that there. But just for fun, let's go ahead and adjust our stitch length up to about a 3.5. That's going to give me a little more spacing um, on the stitch, and I'll have more room with my ladder stitches if I wanted to do something like weave a ribbon or do something decorative that way. So I've got my fabric folded, and I'm ready to sew the next seam. I'm going to go ahead and just trim off that folded edge, same as before. So you can see with this stitch, I've got more spacing up here on my loops. And when I pull it apart on the back side, I've got more spacing between my ladder stitches. I'm going to go ahead and record my notes and we'll be ready for our final stitch. All right, so we're ready to do our final stitch. We're going to go back to the um, wide flat lock with two threads this time, and we're going to put our left needle back in the machine. So I'm going to go ahead and get my helpful tools to help me install the needle. And one thing that I really love about the L4 series overlockers is that we've got this really great needle check window on the needle bar so that I can make sure that I've got my needles in the exact right position. If you didn't know, on an overlocker, the left needle sits slightly higher than the right needle. So while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and remove my right needle. It is important if you are not using a needle um, to create your stitch that you don't forget to take that needle out of the machine. If you leave it in the machine, it can result in the stitch looking a little bit strange. So I've got my right needle. I'm going to put it in my little needle storage pad there and put my tools back here. Go ahead now and thread my left needle. Okay, so let's go ahead and set our tension settings for our last stitch. And on this two thread wide flat lock, I'm going to take my left needle tension down to about one and a half. And I am going to take my lower looper tension up to about a five. My cutting width will remain at seven. We're gonna leave the stitch length at three and a half and the differential feet at one. Since I've changed that out, I'll go ahead and just chain off a little bit here to make sure that I'm getting something that looks like a overlock stitch. We're ready to go. That's way too tight. Let's take that down to about four. So with this wide flat lock and uh, a cotton fabric, it has a tendency to want to kind of cup the fabric a little bit. So I did make a little fine tune adjustment there as I was stitching and I adjusted my um, lower looper down to about a four and my um, left needle tension up to about a two just to get that, um, that fabric from basically, um, to prevent the fabric from cupping in the seam. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and record my notes and we're all finished. So now that we have created our four stitches and we have this little sample to reference, it's time to get creative. You can add decorative stitches like this pearl crown rayon or this razzle dazzle um, into your loopers, which makes really fun flat locks. Um, and I can't wait to see what kind of projects you make. Um, here's a pillow that uses the flat locks. I have done both sides, so you can get the ladder stitch on one side, I've got the loops on one side, and I created this pillow with 
that nice Renaissance ribbon. Um, when I did this, when I did this pillow, um, I basically disengaged the cutting knife so that I wasn't trimming the edge of this ribbon. So if you're doing that, a good thing to do is maybe to put your seam guide on there so that you get nice straight seams and you don't put extra fabric into that looper area. But this is a fun project that you can find on wealso.com that uses the flat locks. In addition, we have the silhouette dress, which was the campaign dress for the L4 series machine. This is downloadable on bernina.com as well. But these flat lock seams here have a decorative um, textured nylon thread in them. And the nice thing about this is that these seams lay flat against your body and it creates a nice flattering shape. So you can do these curved seams in construction. Um, another fun way to use a flat lock is just as a, a t-shirt hem. So on this t-shirt here, um, on the bottom, I did that flat lock as a blind hem stitch and it looks a lot like what you see in Ready to Wear. You've got the ladder stitch exposed here on the um, right side of the garment. So I can't wait to see the fun things that you make using a flat block.